Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we're gonna be checking out the new Frazetta 5.5 action figures from Zolo World. Yeah, these are officially licensed Frazetta action figures inspired by the Frazetta amazing artwork, the beautiful paintings that has inspired so much over the years. And now we've got some official action figures done in that retro five and a half inch scale and style. Pretty cool concept for a toy line. And I gotta be honest, this one right here is what really did it for me. I was so excited about the idea of getting Death Dealer in the 5.5 style. Um, so he's the one that really made me pull the trigger. But we're gonna check out this assortment here, which includes Death Dealer, Flesh Eaters, The Huntress, and The Jungle Lord. Now, as you can see, uh, smart move, obviously, by using this beautiful Frank Frazetta artwork in the background on the card backs with the figures there. Um, got that great Death Dealer artwork off to the side here with our Death Dealer figure in the blister bubble. And uh, I'm gonna knock them all over as I'm trying to show these off. This around to the back side of the packaging. Uh, you not only get a cross sell showing you the Frazetta figures, but you also get to see um, some great artwork showing the Realm of the Underworld line, which is the uh, main 5.5 line from the folks over at Zola World. So again, we got the flesh eaters here, and while I do have a bit of paint smudged on the inside of the blister bubble, I do still like this overall presentation, where you just got these creepy characters and the awesome Frazetta artwork off to the side, um, you know, perfectly housing the figure on the inside. You can see it looks like he's got an interchangeable head as well. So if you had two of these, it looks like you could do both of these characters, and man, that menace menacing grimace there. Crazy, crazy looking figure. Um, now, the other two figures, I do want to say that uh, I'm a bit bummed by the placement of the blister bubbles, and I'm not sure uh, what the reasoning was for it. I feel like the hunter should be off to the side just a little bit more because she's completely blocking the artwork behind her. And I get the same feeling for Jungle Lord, um, but also with Jungle Lord, he's got this massive bubble, uh, and he doesn't look like he needs that much space, and he is really flopping around. In fact, when I first got him, he was rotated totally sideways in there, and I kind of had to jostle him around a little bit. So, I don't know, I really do feel like that this should have been moved over just a little bit so we can see the artwork better. Specifically, thinking about, like, mint-on-card collectors who want to see the beautiful Frazetta artwork with the figures packaged right alongside it like it looks great on death dealer and the flesh eaters um, but the placement's a little weird on huntress and jungle lord so just a small little nitpick there with the packaging uh, i guess at the end of the day it really doesn't matter because i'm about to rip these open and uh, we're going to get a closer look at the figures inside all right, we got our Frazetta figures outside of the packaging. Uh, if I bring in the tape measure here, you can see that they do stand around six inches tall. Um, they are technically in that vintage 5.5 style, uh, but they do stand a bit taller there. More like uh, what you would see from Remco and some of those other uh, toy lines that were in that same space as things like Masters of the Universe back in the 80s. So these are all done in that vintage action figure style, um, sometimes even using some pre-existing parts from some of those vintage toys. Uh, but there's a lot more going on, especially with Death Dealer here. I mean, this is definitely the shining star. So we're going to save him for the end. Let's go through these one by one and get a closer look at them. Let's go ahead and start with the Flesh Eaters. I pointed out in the packaging that I saw an extra head. Turns out there are two extra heads here, uh, which means if you bought three of this guy, you could have three completely different looking creepy dudes, man. Oh my God, these head sculpts are totally bonkers. <laughs> these are some ugly, ugly dudes, uh, but they're supposed to be. Look at that artwork, man. They look very similar to the hideous looking flesh eaters uh, depicted in that Frazetta artwork, um, kind of translated to an 80s figure style. And I think that's important to know. I think the whole idea here is like, what if we had a Frazetta line in the 80s? So these are definitely done with 80s figure intentions, right? So, you know, the sculpting and everything is just like it would have been on a Remco line, of course, back in that day. Um, 
I love the colors that are used on this guy, actually. There's sort of like this uh, blue dry brushing over his pale gray skin, which looks pretty good. And then he's got this belt here with some nice silver buckles and everything painted on it with this furry loincloth underneath it, which is like an actual cloth material, which is very cool. He's got this one bone knife, which you can see there's like some gauze, some actual cloth uh, soft goods that is wrapped around the handle there. This was tucked into his belt out of the package so showing you a way that you can display it i will say it's a bit tight in his hand i think because of those gauze um so i would definitely be careful you don't want to like tear that up too much though he does get a pretty good solid grip on it now i do want to talk about the interchangeable heads here because the zola world figures do feature interchangeability but it's not the same kind of like popping a head off a ball joint that you would expect from a lot of retail figures um these heads are removable but it might take a little bit of work in fact it might even help if you warm it up a bit with a hair dryer just to kind of soften that plastic a bit. Because let me show you, you do have to kind of really flex that around. And then the head will pop off the peg. You might even get a little bit of paint rub when doing so. And then these alternate heads are going to be real stiff at first. So again, warming them up might help. Um, but you just kind of want to stretch them over the peg. And then they do pop in place. So that way you can get alternate looks for your hideous flesh eaters. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe Huntress here is the first female figure we've seen in the Zola World lines. And it's kind of cool getting a female figure in that 5.5 style. Um, I will say she looks a little confused or scared. I don't know. The way the eyes are shaped and the eyebrows, she definitely has this expression on her face. Um, like she doesn't look quite as confident as the woman we see in the Frazetta artwork there. Um, but I do appreciate the very retro styling here. Uh, you could tell she is definitely naked <laughs> underneath um, the loincloth that she's wearing there. In fact, it sits kind of high on her hips so uh, the bottom of her butt is definitely sticking out here. So you do want to kind of maneuver that around just a little bit there. There's also a piece of tape that is holding uh, this together over her top there. And I think I'm going to leave it there because I feel like this isn't going to stay on too well if I remove it. So, um, you know, like I, I like the idea of this one. I'm just not entirely sure. I love this execution just because this isn't sitting too well. Maybe I just need to pull this down over her hips a little bit. That actually seems like it looks like the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, that might work a little better. Articulation on her is going to be a little different than the others. She does a swivel at the neck. The arms go forwards and backwards. Uh, does look like she's got a, yeah, she's got a cut in the waist there. And then the legs are on ball joints. You can kind of see them under there. So they can kind of roll all the way around. She does come with a bow and arrow. And she comes with this jungle cat. Um... I believe this is the original mold from the Speclatron figures, which I have always found these to be hilarious looking. <laughs> the faces are so funny and it's a tiny little cat, but it's perfect as like a retro cat tie-in, I guess. Uh, obviously, like we couldn't do like the bigger beast. A bigger beast would have been awesome, uh, but that would have been a much more expensive deluxe figure if we had like a huge one that maybe she could ride on. So this little pack-in like uh, kitten is, is a kind of a fun inclusion here. Then we've got the Jungle Lord. Uh, this guy's great. I mean, he looks just like what you would see from like a, a jungle-like character straight out of the 80s. I do love that he's got this actual furry loincloth. Underneath it, he's just got like the uh, flesh-painted sculpted loincloth. That totally seems like something we would have seen, right? But actually, the fur loincloth looks really good on him. Uh, I also do love the lion pelt, uh, which I believe comes off of the Remco Hercules. Uh, I love this quite quite a bit though that works really really well he also comes with a bone handled knife that's got a nice kind of metallic silver blade that he can hold on to there um you know again he doesn't have a ton of accessories or anything so he was in that huge bubble on the card back uh but standalone as a figure i think he looks great i mean he looks like a really good 80s inspired jungle hero but then there's this dude oh man this dude is is amazing first of all uh all the sculpt work and everything on this is so so fantastic that head sculpt looks amazing i love the colors that are used here uh, it's worth noting like the body underneath this soft goods outfit that he's wearing like you can see on the arms this is like molded it looks like in this sort of metallic black plastic almost got like this gunmetal shine to it and it looks amazing same with the helmet up there we got this great kind of gold uh that is dry brush 
airbrush so it looks nice and worn on the armor and the shoulder pads that he's wearing. This amazing kind of uh, belt that's got that same gunmetal shine to it with the skull on it. The soft goods underneath here is awesome. It's like a faux leather. And then it also has... Um, that like sparkly black fabric underneath. It totally reminds me of like the uh, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves toy line. That's what this reminds me of. It's perfect for this figure though. Uh, this all feels and looks really, really good. And then we've got uh, these shin guards as well. Now I do want to talk about these shin guards a little bit because these are removable. So they just pop off the figure. Uh, it fits really well on the left leg, but the one on my right leg is falling off. And I think I realized why it looks like I've got two of the exact same molded so it's like two left leg guards I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be or if that's uh like a QC thing on mine it's a bit unfortunate just because it doesn't stay on I didn't even notice it at first until I was like why isn't this attaching as well and then I realized it's shaped exactly the same as the one over on the left leg but you can see this one actually like snaps onto the leg and this one just kind of sits there so i am gonna have to watch that aside from that one little thing i love this guy i think he looks fantastic uh he does come with this sword and then he also has this bloody axe weapon as well he does have one open hand very similar to a lot of those retro toys so unfortunately we can't really get him to hold both weapons at once uh the way he does in the artwork but i do appreciate that you've got the two different ways for displaying him he's great I mean, it's so cool getting this retro 5.5 style death dealer. I think he looks awesome. So there you go, my friends. That's my look at the new Frazetta figures in the 5.5 retro style from Zola World. All in all, I do think this is a really fun line. Uh, but to me, it is all about that Death Dealer. I think he is the best thing in this line. But it is a cool assortment of toys. I think if you like that vintage 80s style where some of them are just a little goofy looking, uh, you might really dig these. Um, these are available on underworldfigures.com right now. But I will say, Death Dealer is already sold out. I'm not sure if he's going to be coming back. He was clearly the most popular of the batch. The other ones are still available. Only thing I will say is that the price point on these might turn some off. Um, because all of these figures, these three figures are still available. They do run $40 a piece. Death Dealer was a $65 figure. So he's a bit on the higher end as well. I would imagine it's the smaller production run and the Frazetta license that is making these so expensive. So yes, these were some pricey figures, uh, but I, I do love the Death Dealer. So really, I mean, that's going to be up to you on if you guys really see the value and if you think it's worth it or not. But make sure you check it out, underworldfigures.com. Thank you guys so very much for watching, and until next time.